Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Now we know you enjoyed our video on the current boss of bosses Matteo Messino Denaro. So today we'll discuss some of his allies. Graviano brothers are remembered in the Mafia Chronicles as terrible bosses who had a relevant role in the strategy of attacks against the Italian state and in the murder of important figures such as Don Pino Puglisi, the priest who opposed the Mafia and that was eventually beatified after his murder by Pope Francis in 2013. Well, the Graviano family is made up of three brothers and one sister. But generally, when people talk about the Graviano brothers, they refer to the most well-known and powerful ones, namely Giuseppe and Filippo. Both have always been very close, and in all their operations, they have acted in such a coordinated way that they appear to be one person. According to the statements of some turncoats, such as Drago Giovanni and Calvaruso Antonio, Giuseppe and Filippo had equal prestige and were both the minds behind most of the group's strategies, while their brother, Benedetto, was the strong arm, the one who used force to reach those set objectives. In the 1990s, the three were the undisputed lords of the Brancaccio neighbourhood in Palermo. This infamous neighbourhood was home to many criminals and especially mafia gangs of ancient tradition that controlled the territory with threats and violence. After the arrest of the boss Giuseppe Lucchese, the Graviano brothers then became the substitutes and then the actual heads of the district. In the 1990s, the Graviano brothers took part in various terrorist acts against the state, remembered today as the season of massacres. After the arrest of Totoraina in 1993, Filippo and Giuseppe, together with other important mafiosi such as Provenzano, Brusca, Giuliano, Matteo Messina Denaro and Bagarella, got together to develop a new strategy to fight the state. Now I'm sure you recognise many of those names and if you don't it means you haven't seen our other awesome videos about them, so do check them out. But back to our story. Now the intent of the group is to carry out dynamite attacks in different cities of Italy. Now the real season of massacres begins after the maxi trial of Palermo because Cosa Nostra was interested in weakening the state through fear, blackmail and heavily influencing the decisions of the government and the country. The attacks take place between 1992 and 1993 and Cosa Nostra's main targets are various controversial political figures such as Salvo Lima, members of the judiciary who strongly oppose the mafia such as Falcone and Borsolino, but also symbols of Italian cultural and artistic heritage, historical buildings and tangible memories that have made the country's history. So the first city to be hit is Florence. On November the 5th, 1992, an explosive device was placed near the statue of Magistrate Courtius in the Boboli Gardens, a historic park in the city and a true open air museum. A few months later, a car bomb exploded in Rome in Via Fauro in Parioli, one of the most important districts of the capital. Now, shortly before that, the journalist Maurizio Costanzo had passed by. Now, he remained unharmed, but 24 people ended up being injured. Florence is attacked for the second time on May the 27th. Near the Torre dei Pulci, a van full of explosives blows up. 41 people are injured, 5 dead. The Uffizi Gallery also suffers a great deal of damage and many works of art are severely damaged. On July the 27th, Rome and Milan are both hit and a bomb explodes in the Basilica of San Giovanni in Laterano and a second in Via Palestro. In all of this, the Graviano brothers have a very specific role. In fact, they're the ones who have handpicked the team of criminals who then carried out these terrorist acts. Giuseppe and Filippo are also remembered for another infamous crime, the murder of Father Pino Puglisi. Now we do have a video that discusses how the Mafia and the Church have had a pretty promiscuous relationship throughout history, but we need to say that some clergymen did indeed strongly oppose the Mafia and, of course, ended up paying with their lives and we do like to remember these real heroes. Now, Father Pino Puglisi was a priest and educator as well as pastor of the Church of San Gaetano in Brancaccio. He was strongly committed to the anti-mafia struggle. 
And he specifically addressed the very young, or those who'd not yet entered the mafia structure, giving them a new and more honest view of the world. His actions were also aimed at taking off the streets many youngsters employed as drug dealers and robbers. Now this irritated the Graviano family and probably led them to order the murder of the priest on his 56th birthday. The killer sent to carry out the crime is Gaspari Spatuzza and it was he who later repented and indicated Giuseppe and Filippo as the instigators. Filippo and Giuseppe were already fugitives before the murder of Pulisi. Both are arrested in the restaurant Il Cacciatore in Milan on January the 27th, 1994. Their capture is the last act of a long and precise investigation that had intensified following the assassination of Father Pino Pulisi. The two, even in prison, continued to remain in silence and in secret to have relationships with Cosa Nostra and refused to cooperate with the police. The Brancaccio district was subsequently controlled by Mangano Antonino and then Leoluca Bagarella. The mafiosi did not interrupt the contacts with the Graviano, and indeed Mangano is considered the spokesman of the brothers. After the capture of Bagarella, the police found in fact many hidden letters sent by Giuseppe, who signed himself as Mother Nature. During their imprisonment, the Graviano brothers continued to command the Brancaccio neighborhood from a distance, and their actions seemed very similar to those of many other bosses in jail. Yet, some of their choices are strange, especially those related to the family. In fact, before being arrested, they invested about 1 billion lira to buy a villa in the French Riviera and to take their families away from Sicily and from the Mafia influence. And it's precisely in this house that the sons of the Graviano brothers are baptised, both with the name Michele. The purpose of Giuseppe and Filippo was not to bequeath to their offspring a criminal career. In fact, in a letter to his sister, Giuseppe writes, These children must not grow up in Palermo, because in Palermo they will end up like I did. Now, a curious thing is that the Graviano brothers' children are conceived when they're both already in jail. According to a hypothesis, the two managed to get their sperm out of jail, while the lawyer of the two stated that instead the sperm had been frozen before the arrest. Also, in a fascinating twist of the tale, during their detention, Filippo and Giuseppe both graduated, the former in economics, the latter in molecular biology. Obviously not the easiest lines of study, and marks an even more interesting trait that distinguishes them both from other bosses. Clearly an intelligent guy, the pair of them. So there you have it, another insight into some of the key characters of organised crime. And what a tangled web it certainly is. So if you want to see more, then make sure you do subscribe to the channel as we've got loads more videos coming out in the near future. But until next time, ciao.